Okay, so let's go to DJ Franklin. Okay, so you've got some interesting things going on. Like this looks correct and done. It's still a little, still a little soft right there. Um, let's see. a little soft right there and why are they now sitting on top of each other my god it's like I, I, don't, I don't think I mentioned anything about the spacing I just wanted you to render this perspective to look like this so what you, you did is you moved it on top of each other so that's that's no bueno that's not good um, this wireframe looks good but then I don't understand what happened here what's the issue is he here? Is he is he in, in the? Here you are. Yeah. What happened? So I tried to collapse uh, what you call some lines, mm -hmm. so I can make it smoother. But mm -hmm. I don't know what happened, and it just made like a black hole. Yeah. Well, it it looks like you could collapse these outer ring, the outer loop instead of the ring. You collapsed um, this outside line instead of the inside ones so you're supposed to collapse this not this all right so and it collapsed it to the center uh did you hit control z to go back oh no okay so you have your you have this back yeah okay cool 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 all right uh yeah this is looking good this is looking real good but yeah, come on, man, you gotta separate these. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I get that it's in perspective now, but you gotta, you gotta, come on, give him some space. Let's be, let's be, let's be real here. Um, man, it looks like, I don't know if this is, it looks like you're getting some weird stepping in here, but I can't tell unless I look at the wireframe again. Um,. This doesn't look bad. It looks good, man. It's it's a uh, it's really turning out well for you. Um, let me look at the wires. Yeah, it looks round. It looks round. Let me open it bigger. Maybe. It looks round. Right, I can see the the cleanness of your geo, and yeah, you've got the. Yeah, it looks good. All right. Uh. Yeah, that looks good, man. That's a that's a good high poly high poly model you got there. Just your presentation it, it leaves a lot to be desired. All right, let's see who's next. Raymond, okay. Raymond, any changes? Okay, yes, this is it. Okay, I think I see that in there. It's a little small, but I can see it. Um, I still have an issue with this guy right here. It just feels like it's too far out like that. So I would grab this guy and then pull these guys out that way. Pull them out that way. So that you have more of a, a steeper incline right there. Other than that, this looks really good. And change the background. All right, change the background. Where's Killer Smith? Is he in here? You got to change the background, Brody. The black is not working. It's making it very hard for me to judge what's going on. Let's put it on a neutral gray background. Neutral gray. Mid-gray. Oh, you want to show how to do it? Okay, I'll, I'll show you guys how to do that here in a second. No problemo. Thanks for letting me know. Yeah, whenever you save it out as like a PNG, it comes with an alpha. It's got an alpha channel, so it should automatically uh, separate itself for you. And then you just... Uh, or you can even just do it inside of 3ds Max itself. Just hit 8 on the keyboard and uh, change that color, the, back, uh, the environment color. And uh, yeah, that should that's another way of doing it, so you don't have to do it in post. All right, uh, Angel has yet to show up. 
Okay, Edisame, you've been peddling this same image for a year and a half now. I know we've only been in this class for like two weeks, but I've seen the same image, bruh. You made a donut. We need to get this this guy on track. Are you using Ma Black Maya or what is what software is this? Soft homage? I don't I don't even know. My God, what software is this? Does anybody recognize? Is this Blender? Is this what Blender? Oh, it's 3ds Max. Oh, look, this is the view cube right there. How did you make 3ds Max look so bad? I don't even. I couldn't even tell. Oh, okay. He 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 saved out this image using his phone. Ah, right, that makes sense. That makes. I'm like, I'm trying to trying to break down the image. Like, what is going on here? Oh, all you did was just you used your phone and apparently you have a flip phone. Cause even a, a regular regular phone has to have some sort of decent pixel width. Um, yeah, this is a uh, this is. This is the start of it, but I, I need you to I need you to progress. I can't give you any comments because you you really haven't done anything yet, right? This is just a a donut with a with a little thing in the middle, right? Let's let's get our forms in. Let's start doing stuff, right? Let's not pedal the same image for five weeks straight. This is this is a start, but you got you got to keep it going. You got to keep it going. All right. David E. Keep playing and you finna get an E. Alright, whoa, this is looking good. Okay, Eddie. Alright, Eddie. I see you. I see you. Have I already seen this one? That's crazy. I don't, I don't think so. This is good, man. This is a good coin. Look at that. See, that's the that's what I'm talking about right here. This his the steepness of his. Yeah, that looks good. That's a good one. It's a good one, man. Good job. Good J O B. Your stuff ain't on top of each other, looking like they they trying to catch Corona, right? Y'all need to at least keep safe social distancing, right? Sit, you know, decent social distancing guidelines should apply for your model, right? They don't need to be you know hugging up on each other. All right, so uh, yeah, this is uh, this is a good one. Good, 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 good. All right, man. There's hope for this class yet. There's hope. Maybe not so much. All right, let's see what this guy got. I would need the software fix. All right, yes, you would, and hopefully you've gotten it so you can start to do the work because none of y'all showed up, especially since they told me y'all got the software now, so everybody should be in here. All right, and Devon, are you even in here? Devon, 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 Devon. Uh, no, I guess not. All right. Um, yeah, same comment as last week. Come on, man. This is this is a good start, but you got to keep it going. You can't stop. You got to keep making those corrections, getting better. April, okay. So you'll get yours today. Get it started. April. Yes. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, right. We're only doing the high poly, right? Yeah. You, well, this week you're responsible poly? for the low poly as well. Okay. Yeah. So this week we're moving on to the low poly, boys and girls, and uh, yeah, that's that's the next step of this. All right. Uh, so let us uh, let's start the class. That, that you know. You guys have the notes that you guys need to fix of what you guys need to do. Um, let's uh, let's go through what we're gonna do today. So today we're gonna watch a short video uh, on aspect ratio. Uh, just to give you guys a, a quick refresher, if you guys don't know what aspect ratio is, or if you guys just want to learn a little bit more, just so we are all working with the same ideas the same deck of cards right that's the that's the idea is we all understand the same facts about one subject so that we all can can uh you know uh proceed together on this journey with the same knowledge with the same information 
I, I, I always implore you guys to read a lot of books because um, for me, when I read books, it, it's, it feels like there's all this information out there. And every time I read a book, I know that information, right? All these great authors, all these people who've lived lives that I haven't lived, they've put information out there. And whenever I get uh, get a book, I now know that information. So I'm no longer at that disadvantage. Whatever they knew, now I know. So I want you guys to take a similar approach to learning where there's all this information out there. And the more you know it, now you're on the same level playing field, right? The, the idea is that What's, what's separating you guys from the pros is this knowledge gap. And the more I can bridge that knowledge gap for you, the faster you guys can get to where they are. Because now at the very least, you might not have their hand skills yet because you haven't experienced it, but you know what they know. You have those same ideas, those that same information. It's all ready for you. Uh, Long-winded intro aside, let's just watch. It's a three-minute video that we can quickly watch and, and uh, continue the class. What is this? Why is it all... Uh, a little help? The aspect ratio defines the shape of a rectangular image. It's the relationship between the width and height regardless of actual measurements. That's why you're not supposed to say 16 by 9, but 16 to 9, or just 16 9. But you can say 16 by 9, it doesn't matter. Everybody says it, I say it. Industry language is going to be what it's going to be. Not only has the moving image had tons of different standard aspect ratios throughout its brief history, but different industries don't even agree on how to express the ratio. Because of that, content made in one aspect ratio often needs to be converted for presentation in another, which can look very stupidly terrible. But it's not just the modern problem of portrait versus landscape. In the days of standard definition, TVs were 4x3, and to make the most of their relatively low resolution, widescreen theatrical movies were pan and scanned, meaning the director, or more often a random technician at the telescene lab, made decisions about what to include in the frame moment by moment, sometimes scrolling across the image during a shot. Another approach was to reveal more of the top and bottom of the full 35mm film frame, which often contained things not meant to be seen. When 16 by 9 TVs were introduced and consumers had to nail the right balance of aspect ratio settings between different devices, not a single waiting room TV on earth had a properly shaped picture. And of course today, as children and the elderly re-upload humanity's entire audiovisual history to the web, simple video conversion software makes automated brute force aspect ratio decisions. Random sloppy edge mapping is common. Sometimes uploads are even distorted, because aspect ratio doesn't just vary on the image, it can also vary on the pixels making up that image. To save space, some video formats squeeze the picture and record it in slightly lower horizontal resolution, relying on the playback process to recognize and stretch it back out. These formats are called anamorphic and are mostly being phased out, but the concept is still used in some feature films where a specially shaped lens compresses the image optically before it reaches the recording medium. That's what gives lens artifacts in those movies that are signature cool distorted shapes. But let's not get distracted. What are we going to do about this mess? After all the different standards, could there finally be one universal future-proof aspect ratio? People are vertical, but their world is horizontal. So is it a perfect square? Maybe. But in the end, this is a storytelling medium, and stories tend to involve multiple people in a world. So maybe we've already gotten it right a while back? Although, it is nice to just have a bit more scope and room for graphics. You know what? This is fine. I'm calling it. This format works. Alright. So, uh, aspect ratio. You guys, we work in, as he says, 16 by 9. Uh, you guys have probably heard that aspect ratio used often. Uh, because that's what, you know, we watch everything and your screen right now is probably a 16 by 9 if you're looking at it uh, on your laptop or a computer or something like that. Uh, the images that you guys are going to render out of 3ds Max, they're mostly uh, going to be 16 by 9. From this class, all of them are going to be 16 by 9. It's going to be rare that I require you to use any other uh, file format. So your 1920 by 1080, uh, your 1280 by 720. Those are all uh, 16 by 9 formats. 
uh, that we will be utilizing for this class. So that's just something I want you guys to keep in mind. I don't, I don't know if you guys ever get people who talk to you about aspect ratios or even try to let you guys know what's going on under the hood, but uh, that's what I'm going to try to do here is, is, is show you guys a little bit of what, what's working uh, under the hood of, you know, just graphics in general. This isn't going to just help you with 3D. This is going to help you in anything so you understand the relationship between uh, the, the kind of monitors that you're seeing and why some of the images are squ uh, squished or if they have uh, window boxes or, or picture boxes uh, as their framing capacity. So little things like this will will just get you uh, to that next, uh, that next level. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we are going to uh, discuss... 3ds max modeling terms and you guys have been in 3ds max for a while now so you guys should be familiar with some of these uh, terms all right so uh, let's let's start so when it comes to using 3d software packages you will find a, a common issue is that each program developer will have their own unique terms for functions in their programs for example, Max will refer to TurboSmooth to add geometry to your model, but in ZBrush, it would be referred to as subdivisions. Uh, this can become frustrating and uh, confusing, so let's cover the basic terms in 3ds Max for 3D modeling. All right, so parts of a polygon. So the vertice is the smallest component of a polygon model. It is a point in 3D space that can be manipulated to create the desired shape. Edges define the shape of a model by combining two vertices with a straight line. Faces uh, are when three or more edges are connected together, it creates a surface. This is usually the largest part of the model. So this blue dot right here is a vertice. This line right here is the edge. And the face that it makes when all of these come together is called a face. This object is called geometry, right? That's the colloquial term for it, right? That's, that's the everyday term that we use in uh, CG. It's called geo, right? What comprises of your geo are verts, edges, and faces. Easy to remember. All right. So here are some different types of surfaces. There are trigons, which are, have three sides. There are polygons, which have four sides. And there are n-gons, which have five or more sides. I usually call these no-no-gons, right? No-nos, as in you don't really want a lot of these because these are what, it's, what are going to cause you uh, nightmares and sleepless nights when it comes to 3d modeling right the uh, you know people have dedicated you know threads and entire entire threads to solving solving these right uh, it's it's a it's a puzzle that you're gonna have to battle with your entire career uh, n-gons are very interesting because uh, they're the things that create poles and they'll cause weird shading issues but uh, you'll find that in some characters, while well, you can't even escape and gone. So until you guys get to that level of understanding character theory and, and different things like that, I would try to stay away from having end gons in your models because what they usually mean is uh, poor modeling or uh, poor end results for you, right? And you don't want that. You want to keep everything at the very least tries uh, for optimization quads. And the reason is because if you divide a quad in two, all you get is two triangles, right? This is this is good because what happens whenever you go inside a, a gaming software is it's going to turn everything to tries anyway. It's going to either pick one way. It's going to either slice this try uh, this quad this way or this way. That's what it's going to do. And a lot of artists, instead of letting the game engine decide for them how it's going to turn these polys which is what it's called where you're turning polys where you're you're taking this they will go inside of 3ds max and do it themselves so they'll say i want this to flow this way and then if you have another a quad right here i want this to flow this way and that way and they'll actually tell the software how to do it they'll triangulate it themselves 
so that the computer doesn't do it uh, do it for you and mess up your your vertices or your turbo smooths or your smoothing groups right that's what um, that's what that does and I'm, I'm giving you guys a lot of information but uh, you guys you guys will get this as, as you guys are going all right so the rendering process this is the process of converting a 3d model into a 2d image and some of you guys have already been doing that you guys have already been rendering out your models right you've learned to grab uh, HDRs from online right and then you've put HDRs in scenes and you've lit your coin with HDRs right that's the essential thing that they, they've done in Maya here which is they've gotten an HDR and they've used it to light this model and render it out of uh, Maya and you guys have been doing that with Arnold and Scanline and all the fun stuff so you guys the reason I, I do this a little later is so that you guys have been in the software now you guys have been using it and you guys now have an opportunity that this words don't aren't too foreign they're not alien anymore because you've technically been just doing it right uh, and that that's another way so that you guys can learn so uh, this is your viewport right you guys if you guys have been in 3ds max and I know a lot of you guys have not been in 3ds max because you haven't gotten the opportunity to get the software but if you've been in 3ds max you know that this is your viewport this is your interface this is your window into the 3d universe all right uh, your viewing window into your 3d space your 3d world this is where you create magic this is where you make everything happen right in here all right So let's talk about the extrude, right? The extrude creates more geometry by pulling the face of a polygon out. All right, you guys know that because you've been doing extrudes and bevels already, right? These are terms that you guys have been using. I just want you guys to know them. They will be popping up on a quiz for you, right? There's a quiz on tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow's Thursday. Yeah, there's a quiz tomorrow. So. Uh, yeah, these are going to be the terms that are, will be on there. All right. So bridge. A bridge function uh, is used to join two sides in order to fill in a gap in the model. All right. So you guys should know how to bridge things, right? You guys have been bridging things and you know, deleting stuff and, and, and fixing uh, objects. So this, these terms should be uh, just, oh, okay, now he's putting a term to the things I've already been doing. All right, a Boolean, right? I showed you guys what bo the power of Booleans the other day, right? A single 3D object which is created by adding, subtracting, or intersecting the space between two objects. That is what a Boolean is, right? That uh, blue cylinder is cutting out that hole in that rectangular prism, rectangular square. All right. So this is operand A subtract subtracted from operand B, which is this, and it leaves us a hole. And you can do different operations. You can combine them. You can merge them. You can intersect them. Right. There's a lot of different things you can do with booleans, and I. Uh, I don't teach a lot of booleans, but they've become so powerful over the the couple of the past couple of years that I've been able to do some really amazing stuff with booleans, uh, ZBrush cleaning up and stuff like that, and that's a lot more advanced stuff. And I can show you guys, but you guys have to get to that point where you're ready to start really diving into uh, that aspect of it. All right, so. The mirror function, this creates an exact replica of the selected object. A mesh is a collection of vertices, edges, and faces that defines the structure of a model, right? So mesh, geometry, all colloquial terms that refer to a collection of verts, edges, and faces that define the structure of a model. These are terms you you'll hear all the time. Right, Pat, you know, do you have that model ready, or uh, what's that geo looking like? Things like that. This this is the kind of stuff you'll hear whenever people are talking 3D. I have a wireframe. This is a way of visualizing geometry by drawing lines 
between its vertices and not shading the surfaces within. All right. So you guys have been rendering out these wireframes for me and I've been using them to analyze the structure of your model, how it's built, right? Because the, the devil is in the details, so to speak, right? Sometimes it may look right and you look at the wireframe and you're like, oh my goodness, what did you do with this? Right? Like, you know, so like sometimes it might look right and sometimes that might work for, you know, if it's like a one-time job, but sometimes man you look at some people's wires and you know there's certain artists who'll never show you their wires so you know there's sometimes some fugazi stuff going on they, they've had to rob peter to pay paul kind of kind of kind of modeling all right you know dirty modelers uh who don't care about geo when when, a, when an artist is confident enough to show me their wires I, I you know i think okay this this person is either trying to learn or they know their wires look so good that they can't help but showing their good work, their good geometry. <coughs> so a rig is a series of controllers added to a model for the purpose of animating. All right. So a lot of the characters in the games and the movies that you see, those guys have rigs, right? And these rigs are what animators use to move, pose, and act out these scenes that you see and help you uh, to move your character, fire weapons, roll, dodge. The rig is what does all that, right? And uh, there are specialists that do rigs and... Um, Man, it is, it's, a, it's an interesting job because you have to have a lot of attention to detail and, and be able to understand skinning. Uh, rig, you know, sometimes the riggers aren't the animators. Sometimes they, they are, but, uh, you know, and to be, I, I often think to be a good animator, you have to at least, at the very least, understand rigging. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a definitely one of those more technical aspects of our job, but um, it's, it's still very fun to do, all right? Probably not for me, but, you know, it's fun to do. And I have rigged in the past. I've had to because I have characters and I've had to make my own rigs. Uh, and there are auto-rigging softwares that exist now that make the process a little bit easier for you. Uh, things like Mixamo uh, that have, you know, you just upload your model and it puts a basic rig on it if the character isn't too uh, crazy or anything like that. So the solutions are, are popping up that make rigging not the end of a project now that you can you know you can kind of move forward with that so there are two types of edges so there are beveled edges and then chamfered edges so uh, the beveled edge is a method used to reshape geometry to create a soft edge a chamfer uh, is used to cut off the edge of the uh, geometry in with a planar cut typically at a 45 degree angle uh, to create a hard edge and the truth is these these two terms in 3d are kind of used interchangeably right and depending on the software you're using it's gonna change it's gonna say a bevel is this or a, a, a chamfer is that in 3ds max um, a bevel can do both no a chamfer can do both a chamfer can create that hard edge and it can also make you a soft edge because like I showed you guys well, you can do double chamfers which creates that you know the appearance of it as a softer edge or you can bevel it and it creates that hard edge right so uh, 3ds max is one of those softwares that you know just these these two terms depending on the software will mean different things so that's one of the things i wanted to kind of get across for you know to you guys on this on this slide all right so uh shader right a shader is a node applied to a model in the hyper shade the material editor uh in 3ds max to give the model the color or texture all right so that is your shader those little the the little node that you guys are pulling out this is the slate editor uh right here or this is the compact editor. Sorry, I spoke wrong. Uh, this is the compact editor. Uh, what we use in this class, we use the node-based editor, uh, the, the the graph editor, the slate editor, and that's the one where you can drag and drop these guys out, and then it creates a little node, and then you can drag and drop those. And I prefer the that visual way of working because it's very hard to understand what's going on for me personally 
with the compact editor because everything is nested inside of this uh, this shader. So you have to click the shader and then you have to go through it to add all the things that you need to add. And for me, it gets a little confusing. I just want to see what is working, see what it's doing right then and there. And it really helps me uh, to, to texture and shade things a lot better. Okay. So a texture is a 2D image projected or wrapped around a 3D mesh. Right? Uh, a 2D texture is projected on this guy right here, and that's why we get this brick texture on this uh, piece of geometry. All right. So a material, on the other hand, is a texture applied to an object which will display a realistic look when rendered. All right. So materials and textures are one of those terms again that are used kind of interchangeably so somebody might say hey where's the texture for this right and they might be referring to the 2d image that goes on the object right and you can also have textures that act as materials right it sounds a little confusing because it is in certain ways because textures materials and shaders all work together because i can take a 2d image throw it on this sh shader right this little circle this little gray ball is a shader that i can throw a texture on right and then together that is the material right that is a material for your object right so it, it can get a little confusing but I don't want you guys to get lost in the minutia all right so the material itself is a you know is a composite of the textures and the shader together working together to create your material so somebody might say hey what are your materials looking like all right so you're gonna go pull up your shader and they're going to look at your uh, your material structure, or your material node structure. And they're going to say, hey, what do those textures look like? And they might be referring to the 2D images that are connected to your shader. Right. So don't get lost in the minutia, guys. This is it's all saying similar things. All saying, right, that the coin itself, right, the coin itself has a material on it. The material you put on it is a shader, right? And remember, the first thing you guys do is you put an image on a plane. That image is a technically a 2D image. Even though it's acting as reference, it's still a 2D image. It's still a texture that you put on a piece of plane so that you can see what that coin looks like whenever you're making it, all right? So specular, this property determines how shiny an object appears. It represents the highlight that the light creates when shining on an object. All right. So the specularity is the shininess, right? That's a technical term, shininess. All right. That's the shininess of uh, our object, how reflective it is, the highlight, where the lighting is, how the lighting is affecting your object. This is our specular map. <laughs> the bump map and we're going to have a day where we talk specifically about normal maps bump maps and all that stuff but the bump map creates the illusion of three dimensionality of a surface for creating effects like wrinkles creases crumples cracks seams and the list goes on and off right surface detail surface things that protrude from the skin objects different things like that can be made with a bump map all right so this this shader might be soft but if we throw uh like a roughness inside of the bump map we're gonna get a surface that looks like that it's not adding extra geometry to it right i want to i want to reiterate that it's not adding extra any extra geometry to it what it's doing is it's giving us the illusion using black and white black and white uh 
to describe the height of the object. So if it's black, it's saying this is going down. If it's white, if that shade is closer to white, then that is going up. So where you see these highlight, where you see it raised, you know that that value is closer to white. Where it's going down and being protruded into the, the, the mesh, that value, that color value is closer to black. All right, so this is probably a mix of grays and whites because of how rough this is. And you guys will understand this a little more as I keep going, All right? But that's what a bump map is doing. It's just an illusion. It's not creating any extra geo or whatever. It's not creating any extra polygons, any extra vert, any, none of that. It's not doing any of that. What it's doing, it's an illusion, All right? All right, so there are ty different types of modeling. Right, what you guys are currently doing right now is the high poly model. So there are two steps to create a model to use as either a game or a film asset known as high poly and low poly modeling. Both are essential to creating a model and both are an important part in the creation of objects to be used in digital media. All right. Right now, what you guys have created, what you guys have been tasked tasked to create is the high poly model right you guys are still creating your high poly model right now because some of you guys are having issues some of you guys have finished your high poly model so you should know what I'm talking about the geometry count for your high poly model will usually be astronomically higher than your low poly model I'll give you guys reasons here in a bit. But when I'm talking about for film or for game, there are a lot of different philosophies that are going on right now. And depending on the medium you're working it will determine the, uh, the level of your high poly model. All right? So... To, to, to explain that in a way that you guys will understand a little more, what I'm saying is uh, if I'm working on something like The Matrix where I'm Keanu Reeves is about to do some crazy stuff. I don't, I don't know if you guys have seen The Matrix, but it's a movie about this guy called Neo. He's the one. If you haven't seen it, go see it. But he's going to do some mind-bending, altering tricks. So the stuff that he can't do in real life we're going to need a, a double for it, a CG double, because what he's going to do is stuff that no human being can do. All right. So he's going to do that stuff and we're going to create a CG double as accurate as possible. That model is going to be a high poly model, right? High poly to low to mid poly ish, right? Because computers aren't having to worry about the extra processes and they're not there this is just going to be a final render so they have all the time in the world to render this out they're not like playing it real time like it's a video game right it's not a video game so this doesn't have to be played in real time so what they do is they are leveraging computer power they're leveraging computing power to make sure that this guy has all you know this this cg extra of him can do all the stuff that he can do right so that's what they're doing. They're using this high poly model to do all the mind bending stuff like right? when he's bending back and dodging bullets and stuff like that. That stuff is the, the effect of a high poly CG model. Whenever I'm playing Call of Duty or Apex Legends or World of Warcraft or Overwatch, those are low poly characters with the high poly projected onto them. Right, we're projecting all the lovely high poly detail that we've made and we're projecting that onto our low poly model. And that's where you get the term, term low poly because it's a lower poly version usually of the high poly model. That's not to say that there aren't some games that are purely low poly with no high poly whatsoever. Those do exist. You've noticed that with uh, let me see what kind of games have just low poly characters. There's a lot of them out there. I can't. I don't know why I can't think of one right now. But there are definitely games with just low poly. You probably played 
low poly games where there's no high poly involved. It's just low, uh, like No Man's Sky. They don't have any normal maps, none of that stuff. Little things like that. That uh, Games like that don't have uh, high poly models or do any of that conversion. So they're just using completely low poly, right? Commercials use purely high poly objects, right? They use high poly objects because, well, it's going to give you the most fidelity. It's going to look the best on TV in that they can wait forever. They don't care about uh, the specs of playing it real time because they don't have to worry about that, right? But video games, on the other hand, have a lot of restrictions, right? Depending on what engine you're using, depending on what PC you're on, if you're on a console, if you're on your phone, right? The specs of this is a lot different than your console, and the specs of my console is a lot different than my laptop. So you notice that from the the, 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 the mobile to the, the PC or the console to your laptop or your, your high-end computers, you're going to get different qualities of games because the specifications are different, right? They're a lot lower than what you'll get in quality of movies, but a lot of it uh, is getting better because we're utilizing this high poly low poly process which is what I'm teaching you with this coin you're gonna see that entire process play out and when you learn that okay you'll have a basic understanding of okay if I'm making a game I need to go through this process if I'm making a movie I'm gonna go through this process and I've used both in different aspects of my life alright sorry to be so long-winded about it but this this is a very one of those topics that High poly, low poly, you guys will really like, it's, you can really dive really deep into the rabbit hole, right? You can dive really deep into, you know, some people, true high poly, some people, you know, like e even the new, um, the new engine, the new UE5 engine that they, they announce, they're using straight out of ZBrush models, right? They're using straight out of ZBrush, which are notoriously high poly models and they're bringing it into a game engine that's gonna be a game changer right that's gonna be a, a game changer for a lot of people but there are a lot of people who, who are in the back thinking man that's crazy because I know that people are still gonna want optimized games and the faster it can run you know you might be able to increase our poly count but how optimized is it for gameplay am I still running at 60 frames a second am I still running at 190 like what's the quality of the game that I'm getting if you're putting all of these crazy models in there right so these are these, these are little things that we'll, we'll start to touch up on and and give you guys a little more 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 juice on but you know this stuff is fun when you start getting into uh, into what's going on here all right so the high poly model, which is a dense mesh that shows all of the details and represents the best quality of the model. This is the first step in creating a 3D model. This is the exploratory phase where the artist works out the model from start to finish. A high poly model is not used in game or in film. Uh, this is usually for my class, but you don't have to do I can't see you raising your hand, obviously. But um, the reason is because, well, these are very high poly meshes. They have millions and millions and millions of, of polygons. Even, you know, the real time, even the, the movie stuff, they still needed to be a little optimized because they don't want to wait three years. The people who have the luxury of making and using pure high polys even don't use like Disney Pixar and stuff like that you know all their movies are rendered so they ain't gotta worry about a console specs or anything they just make their movie and then throw it to the engines to render so it might take months to render out certain scenes because of how complex it is with the geometry and VFX and stuff like that you know so yeah, these are these are little things that you guys will start to understand about the, the world of CG. So low poly modeling is a mesh with low density or poly count that is clean, quad based for animation, but also used for most any final uh, object that needs to be textured, animated, or manipulated. After being built, oftentimes the modeler will then bake the details from the high poly model to the low poly model so that the low poly appears just as detailed 
as the high poly model. And that's what we're doing with this coin. Very simple project, but it explores this entire process. All right. So here are in-game models for Assassin's Creed. Right, you see the poly count right here. Right now, now that we've been talking about wireframes and their importance, you can see this guy. He ain't got a lot going to him. Right, he's pretty much a cylinder with arms and a bunch of cards. So these, you can tell. You know, we can count how many: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's eight polys across. Like that's you know your coin right now, guys. Your coin has quadruple like. A hundred times the amount of polys that both of these characters have together, right? That's how detailed the coin, just your little simple Mario coin, has way more polys than these guys do, right? Those coins are not game-ready coins. That's not game-ready. I would never put that inside of a game because it's way too high poly. What we're going to do is use that to bake our information and that's what they probably did they had a high poly character that looked like this and they're baking all of that information down into this lower version of it right these are about 6,000 tries 6,000 triangles right 6,000 and these are like NPC these are NPC characters these are probably characters that you interact with Non-playable characters. I hope you guys know what that means. Right? But these are NPCs, and they are about 6,000 apiece. They probably don't have feet. right? Their inside is probably hollow. Ain't nothing in there. There's absolutely, it's just, it's just, uh, you know, just, just to dispel all that, there's probably no body under this. There's no legs, no torso, no, you know, for this guy, it's all robe. Right, her her body probably ends right at her bust. Like that's probably where it ends, and then it's all geo, no legs, no feet, no nothing in there. Right? Those are these are the kind of tricks. This is the magic that we use to make our games work the way they do. We gotta make it look good, but the poly counts have to be super low. And that's why the first week I showed you guys infinite detail, the idea of where we're trying to go. And I now I get to bring you back to reality of where we currently are. And then you guys can make your own decision as to what you would like to do with that information. You know, is this the field for you? Do you want to pursue a field where you know the technology is still rapidly growing? Like every month there's something new. Every month there's a there's brand new tech or, you know. There's something growing, right? And it's going to be a while for us to get to that infinite detail, but we're still, we're technically still on the way. We're on pace. <coughs> so after being built oftentimes, the modeler will then bake the details from the high poly model to the low poly model. So that the low poly model appears just as detailed as the high. After baking is completed, often the low poly model will look very close to the high poly model. I feel like I just said that. Yeah. So, uh, here is, you know, just, just a visual representation. So, this is our high poly, and here is the poly count. This is probably in the millions. So, here is the new mesh, all triangles, all tries. There are no quads in here because we can't see. Technically, right? Technically, if you guys look right here, like as I draw this, this is a quad. This is a quad. This is a quad because a quad is just literally two tries split in half, right? It's just two tries put together. So you can find quads everywhere, but right now it's a triangulated mesh. Right, so you guys are. This is the this is the way you guys should be looking at this stuff, thinking about this stuff. Okay, I know what quads are. I know that a quad is just two tries put together. And if you look right here, this is what I'm talking about. This is a high valence point right here, right? Because there's all of these verts converting right here, and it might give you some weird 
shading issues and a lot of you know you try to avoid it but sometimes in a in a in a uh, in a model in a, in a character it's hard to you just have to what what artists do is they try to find different p places that are not going to be noticed or animated to put those so like they might find a way to move it right where they move it behind the ear right that's a good place that's where you'll find a lot of your no-no gongs you'll find them behind the ear maybe under under the chin right Th these are places that you go and hide things all right so this is it subdivided to a million they, they brought it back to a million polys and then they just cast all of this information from here onto here so they just took all this information this high poly information they had and they baked it onto this lower version of that all right so that's pretty much the process and this is what i'm going to get you guys to do right now you guys are finishing this guy up you're finishing up your high poly the next is we're going to create a low poly from our high poly and then we're going to bake all of this good information onto our low poly and then our low poly will look similar to our high poly that is it in a nutshell right you guys this is it that's it you guys are done you guys can go off into the world go hire go work for bungie now go go apply go put your application in at uh pixar you've learned everything you need to know you guys are good all right uh you know obviously joking but retopology uh retopology is the act of recreating an existing surface with more optimal geometry that's what you're going to do with your high polys we're going to create more optimal optimal geometry so simply put the act of rebuilding a high poly mesh into a low poly mesh often called retopo in the industry and there are people who specialize in retopology there are people who are who are uh, uh, you know topology masters and they know how to take care of an end gun and they know how to move poles around and, and fix your geo, right? There are people who specialize in just that. And they're really good too. I know a few of them. They're pretty good, pretty good guys. All right. So that is it for uh, for for the lecture. Uh, I've recorded this. I will be uploading it here in a bit so that you guys have it for reference you guys can go back and watch it uh, you guys can study it because there will be a quiz on it <coughs> uh, hopefully the rest of the class gets to watch it and hopefully they know uh, what to expect all right so does anybody have any questions about what we just discussed today so when I started, well, do you want me to just do the low, po the high poly first, or you want me to also work on the low poly also? Uh, I would like you to work on both. Both. Okay. Things. Yeah. So do your high poly first, then your low poly. You know, um, the truth is, uh, sometimes okay. this is, it's a weird, uh, it's an interesting question that she asks because me, a lot of the times it's high poly, low poly, bake texture right that's the usual process but talking to a lot of my colleagues there's some people that go low poly then high poly then back to low poly it's like the process can kind of get can go either way sometimes depending on the model but the way i'm teaching you right now is high poly low poly bake then texture right that's i want to give you guys at least one part of it so that you guys have at least a framework, right? You have to know the rules before you can break them, right? These are the rules. High poly, low poly, bake, texture. But in the future, when you guys are more experienced and you, you've wisened up in your years of 3D modeling and you've experienced a lot of different types of modeling, right? Then you can, you can really experiment and go low, high, low, or low, high, bake, texture, or whatever you want to mix it up as. And that's going to depend on what you're modeling. All right, so yeah, uh, definitely high poly, low poly texture. Any other questions? Did you want us to post the wireframes of our coin models as well? 
Yes, please. Yes, please. I want to see those uh, just so I see that you guys are adhering to good modeling practices and not dirty modeling, uh, as my uh, colleague has been known to call it. Uh, don't be a dirty modeler. I want to see your wireframe so I can correct any mistakes that you might have now. Thank you very much for asking that question, Eddie. Uh, any other questions? All right, so everybody in here should at least have their 3DS Max, right? Antihero. I know you got it. I don't even know what, who's, what your name is, Antihero. Let me find, let me find you. So I, can, so I can blast you in, in name. Is that you? No. Who's Antihero? Who's anti hero? Okay, I don't know who you are, but you're in this class. You should have 3ds Max now. Is it Elmo? But yes, start getting your stuff in. All right. Uh, any other questions? Any other questions before I move on? All right. No other questions. Let's move on to what you guys are responsible for this week. This week, you guys will be responsible for. Uh, the next part of the corn, which is the low poly. So here I have recorded a, a lovely video for you guys to watch on low poly your coin. I would like you guys to go. Scott. And I want it. I want you guys to go watch it. So uh yeah. So in the coin modeling, so if you just go to the the channel, you can watch it here. I'm gonna post this link so you guys can go and check it out. Uh, you guys have till yeah the rest of class for the. Uh, till the end of the week or till Monday to finish your low poly. That's what's due Monday. Your low poly. So I'm going to see high poly, low poly. Uh, tomorrow we'll discuss what issues you had with your low poly. So make sure that you know, you've know you tried something so that if you have any questions so that over the weekend you're not riding dolo solo and you don't know what to do. All right. I want to be able to help you guys as much as possible. I mean, I'm, I'm going to say now I'm I'm happy with the people who've been doing it. Because I know that once you guys, the rest of you guys who who get a chance to do it, you you know you guys are you guys are gonna kick its butt and you guys are gonna do really good on it just because of the you know the stuff that I've seen and the changes that you guys are making on the fly. I mean, I, I, you know I haven't said it, but you guys are doing pretty good work out here. So uh, don't stop trying. Don't give up. It's you know I understand it can be a little confusing, a little frustrating and it can be a little tedious sometimes but this is something that I mean I feel like you guys can really benefit from if you got you know uh, if you guys start doing it a lot and, and start understanding it there's a lot of money to be made out there you know just from people who create assets you know and just sell their own assets online so if you guys can do that for yourself you guys can really set a way for yourselves for you guys can set yourselves up really nice and you know don't be afraid to ask any questions in the chat don't be afraid to ask me any questions I usually reply, reply and respond as soon as I possibly can. Um, 
you know just keep trying guys don't give up you know uh, when you when you give up you're essentially uh, stopping you could be you know six feet from gold and you don't know like if you were just pushed maybe ten more minutes you might have solved the issue so don't give up on yourself you know you can do it you know it's simple little little simple stuff and and uh, I think you guys can really really make uh, make away with this stuff so uh, definitely try it out you know start watching the video it's I think it's an hour an hour or so long so um, you know sit in and, and, and watch it and you guys should have some uh, some stuff for me tomorrow all right if you guys don't have any questions we get in the class for today uh, do you guys have any questions no okay Have a good rest of your day, guys. You too. You too.